Hey everyone, my name is Mr. James. And I'm Miss Danielle. And welcome to our virtual vacation Bible school. We know that this is not normally how we do VBS, but thankfully we can still come together and learn about our amazing God. We are so excited about this week and have so much in store. This whole week we're going to be wait, learning wait, wait, about- wait. You just can't tell them, we have to show them. You're right, check this out. This whole week, we're going to be looking into the heart of God. Before we do that, let's catch up with our friend, Freddie. Shh, 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 Freddie. Shh. Freddie! Ah! I'm awake, I'm awake! Uh, sure you are. Um, I think you have a little bit of drool on your face. Oh, hee <laughs> hee. Sorry, Mr. James. It's all good, Freddie. I just feel bad that I startled you. Oh, no worries. I was actually having a nightmare. Really? <laughs> what about? Well, it was one of my biggest fears. Ah, big fish! Ah! Oh, I didn't realize that you were afraid of fish, Freddy. Yeah, well, worms and fish aren't really the best of friends. Oh. Oh. See, Mr. James, you are lucky that you don't have to ever worry about getting eaten by a fish. The very thought is terrifying. Hmm. Yes, but the guy in our store couldn't necessarily say that. Huh? Let's check it out. You must be wondering how I could sleep through such a big storm. Well, let me tell you, I'm on the run. But not just from anyone. I'm on the run from God. But let me start at the beginning. You see that guy running? Yeah, that's me. Not my proudest moment. You see, the Lord came to me and said, Arise, go to Nineveh, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come before me. But I had other plans. One ticket to Tarshish, please. Oh, Lord! This is strange, Captain! Looks like a storm's come out of nowhere! Ah! Go to the sea! Help! Go to the wind! Have mercy! No. Got him! Anything? Arg! Where's that Jonah guy? Didn't he say he was running from God? There you are! Fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. Oh. What should we do? Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. Because I know that this great storm is because of you. No way! Well, this is not how I thought today, or even my life would end. But you know, that's on me. You can't run from the Lord. I guess this is how it's all going to end. Uh-oh, what's that? I spent three days and nights in the belly of that fish, and so I prayed to the Lord. You have brought my life up from the pit. O oh Lord my God, I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. Salvation is of the Lord. This time, Jonah listened to the Lord and went to Nineveh to preach the message the Lord told him to share. Ah! Ugh. In 
40 days, Nineveh shall be overthrown. The people of Nineveh were cut to heart. They believed his message and repented. They covered themselves in sackcloth to show their sorrow. When the king of Nineveh heard of Jonah's warning, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. He sent a proclamation for the people to not eat or drink and to turn from their evil ways and their violence and repent. They said, who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had done. This made Jonah very angry. Uh, isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? That is why I fled to Tarshish. I knew that you were a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents in sin and calamity. But these people deserve anger and not mercy. They're the worst. Jonah found a spot where he could see what would happen to the city. There the Lord prepared a tree for him, and it gave shade from the extreme heat. But the next day, the Lord sent a worm that ate up the tree. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? You have been concerned about this plant, though it sprang overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals? Wow, that story was intense. Yeah, it was. There is just so much that we can learn from the story of Jonah. Isn't it amazing that in spite of their evil deeds, God showed compassion to Nineveh when the whole city turned away from their sins. Not only did God have compassion for the Ninevites, mm -hmm. he also had compassion and patience for Jonah. Yeah, God could have easily punished Jonah for his disobedience, but time and again, God demonstrated his love and compassion for Jonah. God wants to show us that type of compassion too. Wow, Mr. James. I'm so glad that we have a God that loves us and is patient with us. Yeah, me too. What was that? Eh, don't worry about it. Hey kids, let's say goodbye to Freddie. Bye. Bye. Our theme for this week is compassion. What can we learn about God's character from this story? There is an important truth that Jonah knew that we all need to know about God. Jonah said in Jonah 4.2, I knew you were a compassionate and gracious God slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents in sending disaster. That's why Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. Jonah wanted the people to get what they deserved. That's why he was angry that God showed them mercy. But what Jonah needed to realize is that he also didn't get what he deserved. God was also slow to anger and abounding in love and compassion to him as well. In fact, God is like that with all of us. God is eager to show us compassion. Just like Jonah and the Ninevites, we don't deserve God's mercy. The Bible is clear that we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Remember, sin is anything we think, say, or do that displeases God. And the punishment for our sin is eternal separation from a loving and holy God. That's the bad news. But thankfully, just like how God sent Jonah to Nineveh, God has sent his one and only son, Jesus, to earth. Jesus suffered and died on the cross to pay the price for the sins of the whole world. He took the punishment that you and I deserve. Then three days later, he rose from the dead, showing that he was the son of God. He did this so that if we believe in him, we can be forgiven and become part of God's family. This is the good news of the Bible and the ultimate example of God's heart and compassion for his creation. We're gonna be learning more about this all this week in VBS, and we hope we can see you guys tomorrow. Before we go, let's go over this week's memory verse. This verse really encapsulates all we'll be learning this week. Try to follow along with us. Psalm 86, 15. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in faithful love and truth. Psalm 86, 15. What a great verse. Okay, everyone, don't forget that tomorrow is Crazy Hat and Crazy Hair Day. Don't forget, it's not too late to invite a friend and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.